Hello! In this video, we'll be learning how to perform anomaly detection analysis in Power BI. We are going to use Azure's anomaly detector service for this. This is an artificial intelligence service that Azure provides that takes your time series data and perform an statistical analysis to determine if there's any anomaly. Basically, what it does is to take a look at your data and based on its behavior, it will select the best fitting model for it. Based on its model, it's going to determine what is the expected value for your data. After that, it's going to determine what is, which are the upper and lower margins that are allowed. And it's going to determine which of the data points fall out of these limits. So the end result is to have something similar to what they show in the documentation. In Power BI, we are going to get to a similar visualization in which we have our upper and lower margins. We have the actual value that happened and which and where are the anomalies inside our time series according to the model that Azure selects for our data. Okay, let's get started. Let's go to the documentation page for Power BI in the anomaly detector. And if you don't have an Azure subscription, make sure to create one before moving forward. We are going to use their sample data file in their GitHub repository. However, at the end of the video, we are going to perform this analysis for a list of products that is connected to the sales table of a MySQL database. Let's open the GitHub repository. Once there, click download. I'm going to move this file and rename it to a folder location so I can access it from Power BI. Next, you can click on the link they provide in the documentation page. Create an anomaly detector resource. Or, if you are already in the portal, just type anomaly detector in the search bar and it will show up. Then just click on create and select your subscription. Select or create a new resource group. In this case, I am going to create it to create a new then select the region and assign a name, select your pricing. In this case, I will select free because I am not going to exceed the 20,000 transactions per month limit. This way I won't be charged for this service. Now, while the deployment is in progress, let's go back to the, to the documentation page. The next step is actually connecting to our data. So let's open Power BI, click on get data, Excel and then look for the file. Then let's just open and select the sheet before moving to any further step. We need to know that the anomaly detector service will expect only two columns. One is the timestamp and the other one is the value. As you can see, the sample file that, my, the, that Microsoft is providing already has these two columns. And in this specific case, it's daily data. However, this can also be, for example, monthly. For now, the only transformation step that we need to do is changing the data type of the timestamp. Automatically, Power BI will put it as a date time. However, we need to change it to text. Now, we are going to create a function to be able to connect to the anomaly detection service. The function is already built in their documentation page. So let's go to the new search button and then click on blank query. Then we'll go back to the documentation page and copy the whole text in with the function. Once in Power Query, click on advanced editor button, delete the text that is in the canvas and then paste what we just copied from the documentation. As you can see, we have two variables. One is called API key and the other one is called endpoint. They have put some placeholders there. We need to replace it with our own credentials. So let's go back to Azure and the deployment is ready. So let's just click on go to resource and then in the keys and endpoint blade, copy one of the subscription keys and paste it in the API key value. Then copy the endpoint and paste it in the placeholder for the endpoint. Make sure not to delete the whole line. You need to delete everything that is before the anomaly detector word. Once that's done, just click done and that's going to create a function inside Power Query. As you can see, this function will receive a table as a parameter. 
So to test it, we are going to select the sheet one table. Then let's click on invoke. And then it's going to ask us how to connect to the service. In this case, since we already have the API key in the headers of the API request, we are going to select anonymous. We're going to get this error. So we need to go to fix it. We need to go to file options and settings and then options. After that, select privacy and then click on ignore the privacy levels and potentially improve performance. Then hit OK, refresh, and there we go. Now we have sent our data from the Excel file to the service and it has been analyzed to determine if there's any anomaly. As you can see, there's a column called is anomaly. Everything that is true there means that the algorithm that the service is using is recognizing those as anomalies compared to the whole batch of time series that we sent to it. All right, it's time for visualizing our data. Let's create a line chart and add the timestamp to our axis. Make sure to select the actual value and not the date hierarchy. Then we are going to add the upper and lower margins to the graph and I'm going to change them to a color that will look a little better. Then let's add the actual value to the graph. Now we have what is the upper and the lower margins that Azure was expecting and what is the actual value that happened. Now it's a matter of adding a quick measure to see the anomalies. So I'm going to add another value here and then click on new quick measure. The calculation that I'm going to select is filtered value. I'm going to leave sum of value as my base, but I will select the is anomaly column in the filter and then I'm going to select true. I will go ahead and change the name and for it to show correctly we just need to go to the format, open the x-axis and select the type as categorical. Now we can change the color of the anomaly to red so it can stand out compared to the other points. Everything that is red we know that is considered an anomaly, everything that is gray are the boundaries established by Azure and the blue is what actually happened in real life. Okay, so this is a general overview on how it works. Now let's move to the fun part. Let's suppose that we have a list of products and we want to connect them to the sales table to see if there's any anomaly in the sales behavior. So I have this list and then I have a database to which I am going to connect from Power BI. So let's open a new file. Because it's a small list, I am going to just enter the data manually I'm going to name the table products table. Now we load it and it's time to connect to live data. So I am going to select get data and then database and then MySQL. At this point, you can connect to any source where your data is in. I'm going to indicate the server and then the database. And then I have here my SQL script and I am doing a group by so that so I can have just one line by product and by date. Once I hit OK, I'm just going to authenticate my user and now I have my data. As you can see, we have product ID, we have total sales and we have the date. The first step that we need to do is to change the data type to text for the date. Now, as you remember, the anomaly detector service will expect only two columns, value and timestamp. But here we have product ID and that if we send it this way, it's not going to work. Let's suppose, for example, that I'm going to filter just one by product and then I remove the product ID and now I just have my value and the timestamp. So basically, this is what we need to do for each of the products. Click on the step right after changing the type and then extract previous. That is going to separate our queries into two. The first one will have the source data, which is the SQL. We will also have a second query that will contain all the transformation steps that we need to do to the data to be able to get to a format that Azure will accept. So let's go to the to the query that has the transformation steps. In this case, we are calling it data and click on advanced editor. We are going to turn this query into a function. We do that by adding two parentheses there and then writing in which are the parameters that we are going to send to this function to, to dynamically create the formats for each of the products that we need. In this case, we have filtered this query by product ID 106. So we need to send one parameter for the product ID, 
and one parameter for the for the table so we are going to replace the the number 106 by the product id from the function parameter and then we are going to change the source table by the table we are going to send in the parameters once that's ready let's rename the the source query to source data and then go back to the product table basically what we need to do is to bring the timestamp and the value for each of those products so what we're gonna do is to call the function that we just created from this products table however since we just want to make the sql connection once we are going to create a step in this query that will store the data so let's right click on the last step and then click on insert step after we are going to change this to point to source data which is the table that has our sql statement we're just going to rename this step so we can know that the static table is stored in that one and then we are going to just insert one step after that and instead of calling static table we are going to call change type and as you can see now between those two steps we have our table that has the data that we want to call now we are ready to call the data function so let's click on add column and then invoke custom function i'm gonna call it data anon let's select the function that we want to call as you can see it is automatically recognizing the two parameters that we set up when building the function the first one is the product id and the second one is the source data table in that case i'm going to write something just one to three there as a placeholder so let's click ok and as you can see, I'm getting an error because one, two, three is not correct. We need to change that to the to an actual table that has the data that we want to transform. And that is actually the static table step. So I'm just going to write static. And as you can see, it is coming as a, as a suggestion and I'm going to select it. If I click on the cell, you will see that now that now you have the value and the timestamp for each of the products. Now that we know that that we have the right format that Azure is expecting. Let's just do one quick change into the source data table. I am going to order everything ascending. Okay, now it's time to go back again to the documentation and copy the function. Then let's click on new source, blank query, advanced editor, delete what we have there and copy the whole function. Let's do again the API key and endpoint steps from Azure. And here I have the granularity, which is daily, but if you were working with monthly data, you can just change it to monthly and that would work. And then let's just hit okay. And as you can see, this query is also expecting a table. And we already have a table in each of the records of our products table. I'm just going to change the name to FX Anon. And then let's go back again to the products table. Let's uh, go to the formula bar in the last step and start typing the function that we just created. Since we already have a table in there, that is exactly the format that the function is expecting. Let's just close parentheses. And again, to fix this error, let's just do file, privacy, ignore the privacy levels, and then click OK. Refresh. And as you can see, now we have the analysis by each of the products that we have in the table. In this case, I'm just going to expand. And as you can see, the data types are not fully correctly recognized. So I'm just gonna change it. And then let's load the changes. Now we have our products table with the ID, the name, and the analysis done by each of them. And that's it. Now that the data is ready, let's quickly do the same steps that we did for the previous example to show the final results. And to see which data points are considered anomalies using the Azure service. 